Finally, a Greek deal is struck. What's next for the rest of Europe? Home Depot up after beating earnings and guiding higher. Walmart down despite posting a solid quarter. Oil flirts with $105 a barrel as tensions continue to rise with Iran. Markets opening near multi-month highs. Can the strength continue? I'm Brittany Umar and the morning call starts right now. Good morning, I'm Scott Redler, Chief Strategic Officer of T3Live.com. And I'm Brittany Umar with The Street. First of all, I want to welcome you to Morning Call. This is Brittany's first day with us. It's Tuesday morning, we're excited to have her. I want to welcome you to Morning Call and introduce you to everyone that she's going to be adding value to on a, on a weekly basis. And I'm just happy to have you here. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here on such an exciting day. We've got this news out of Greece, which is obviously the news of the day. Everybody's excited about it, futures are up, but I'm almost surprised that people aren't more excited about it. We're not seeing an even bigger pop in the market on this news. What's the underlying pessimism here? Well, what's interesting is because the markets were closed on Monday, you know, everyone had some time to digest what took place in, in China and what also was, you know, obviously the Greek deal. Futures, I think, were up like eight handles on Sunday night. And then on Monday, they were up like six handles. Then you come in today, they're up a little bit. So I think people are a little bit worried you know, what's going to happen next. People are worried if, if you know, Portugal is going to need some type of deal, if Spain's going to need some type of deal. So right now, you know, I think some of the, the euphoria is out of the market, but, you know, the market's trading really well. We're just going to continue to see if it could have that type of composure as we move forward. Yeah, things are definitely trading well. Is it, has it been stressful trying to stay ahead of this rally? Well, it's been stressful trying to stay with it. And if you take a look at the chart of the S&P, you will see it hasn't really given us that many reasons to stress. We've talked about these two trends, this being the first one. This started on October 4th. If you look at this uptrend, okay, it hasn't even been tested during this entire rally. For the momentum trader, which is what I consider myself, you know, we've been able to stay long multiple positions during this entire move, which hasn't been breached. Last week you saw, you know, on that Wednesday it was, it was close. They let the market close on the lows, but then Thursday engulfed it right away. And, and now we're still trending higher. I think as long as we stay above you know that that 10 day moving average which is about 1350 or the recent highs of 1353 to 1355 i think that we will test last year's high and that volume keeps coming into play too because we're seeing cash on the sidelines all hands are not on deck in a sense what does the lack of volume tell you about the strength of this rally you know, I think you just want to see volume on breakouts. You want to see volume when it's supposed to happen in individual stocks. We haven't had real volume in this market for, for a few years, and that's kept a lot of people out. Don't let that keep you out. Stocks can go up on low volume. And when volume comes back, we got to make sure they're not selling. But if you look at that resistance we were talking about, we want to make sure volume doesn't come in. Look at the chart from last year. Here you go. This is that 1370. 1370 was last year's high. If you want to look on a macro basis, I think that's the next important level to watch. So the longer we hold that support of about 1350, the, the higher the probability is that we will see this 1370 you know, area and we'll see how we react there when we do get there and that could be this week. Now, cash on the sidelines could be getting frustrated seeing hmm. these rallies. So do you think we'll see volume pick up in the near future? Well, at different areas, we need to judge whether or not it's good volume or bad volume. If we go to 1370 and big volume sells it down, then you know some institutions are leaving. We've only had really one distribution day that's still on the calendar with heavy volume of selling within this last 10 week move. So at this particular point, I don't think volume is that important. We just want to make sure that the trend continues. All right. And what do you tell the shorts who might be still thinking about Wednesday's move down last week? Huh. I think if they're still short, they better be a little frustrated or have a plan because if we do start trading, if we trade through 1370, which is their last line of resistance for a, a double top, they're going to have some big decisions to make. So hopefully they're not being opinionated and frustrated. And hopefully they haven't been rolling up their shorts since we broke out because a lot of people were negative on this market coming into January. So take your opinions, leave them to the sideline, watch the market action because the market action has been pretty impressive as of yet. All right, well, let's dive into the sectors to the big headlines of the day, Home Depot and Walmart. Walmart. Let's start with Walmart, who is down, looks soft despite posting a decently solid quarter. What do you think? I just don't think that Walmart was enough in order to propel it to new highs for now. Walmart has been in a nice methodical uptrend. I talked about in the beginning of the year saying, stay with this one. It's one of my mega cap you know, investments for the year. If you look at Walmart, you will see nice chart moving higher. You have two trends here. You have an escalated one and a more 
gradual one. Here is the one that started back in September. You know, this is your upper support. I would say if you're a momentum guy and it breaks and closes below 61.50, if you want to get out of the way, fine. If you're a macro investor, no big deal. It can come back and test this moving average right here around 60.20 and still be fine. I would say 60.20 would be a level that must hold in order to keep, you know, the upward momentum intact. And Home Depot, of course, beat and guided higher. So would you be buying here on strength? I don't like to chase excitement. That's one of my rules. And Home Depot's had a big move. It's opening in new highs. If you're an investor, congratulations. If you're in tier two, tier three, you look at the chart here on Home Depot, I would sell some. Okay, you've had a nice big move. It's above the moving averages. It's opening in new highs. Watch what it does in the first 30 to 60 minutes of the day. If it opens up and can't hold the opening gap, you could see it trade down and then perhaps test some of these moving averages. But for right now, don't chase Home Depot. If you're a long-term investor, stay the course. If you're in a tier two or tier three, I would just take a little bit off the table. All right, well, let's talk tech because we did see strength at a mega cap tech last week. Do you think we'll see that continue this week? I'd love to because it's been fun. I haven't traded these oldies in a long time. I feel like I'm, you know, back in my younger years where Microsoft, Dell, Intel, IBM, all these stocks were rocking and rolling because lately they after consolidating for eight years and frustrating, they're back on the map. So if you look at the Qs real quickly, the Qs have had nice moves. And I'd say as long as the Qs hold above this 10 day as well, it can continue. And when we you know, hit on the quick hits, I'll give you some of those levels of those mega caps. Okay, can we pull up the Intel chart? Because I know this is one you've been excited about. Could that be your next trade? It's just funny because everyone thinks you can't time the market. We timed Intel last week where we started buying on Thursday. You look at the chart here, you'll see had a nice day on that, um, what was it, Thursday, nice engulfing day to take you to resistance. So a two day move like this in Intel only happens a few times a year and guys on our virtual trade floor did pretty well with it. I would say stay with Intel. I do see 31 to 33 at some point this year. And we can't talk tech, of course, without <laughs> talking Apple, especially after its massive move over 500. What's your game plan here? I think you know a lot of the, the, the fast money might leave it for a little while. You had that, that cute short on Wednesday when it failed above 525, and then you had that buy on the 10 day on, on Thursday, which was around 486, and then it closed around 500 with option expiration. If you take a quick look here at Apple, you will see that you know I think that it needs to wedge. Okay, usually when you have a huge move like this, which is a reversal into some type of buying, now you have at least levels to trade against. I think it consolidates, goes sideways for about a week or two, and then we'll figure out the next direction, which I do think will be higher, but at this time, it needs some time to rest. All right, well, I think it's important to check in on the temperature of the banks and the financials after last week's news that Moody's will review the ratings of several banks. So can the financials ultimately shrug off that news this week? I know they did last week. Can they continue to? Well, at least we have points of reference. We know what level held last week. A lot of the financials held their 20 day. If you look at the XLF here, you will see that you know it's holding higher. Obviously, that there are times to be heavy, times to be light. This is when it broke this uh, downtrend, which you could have gotten involved with the XLF around 13. Now it's holding in well. It's holding above this 14 area. It held the 20 day. So you can see that the financials pulled in a little bit more than the overall market. But you now have another channel here. So if you see stocks like a, just say a Goldman Sachs start to get above 117.50 and you see JP Morgan above 38.50, I think the XLFs will, will make new highs in, as well. Now, what if we hear the, these rumors that ratings may actually get cut? Do ratings agencies really have the power to create winners and losers out of the sector? It depends how much they cut and depends when and depends what the market's doing. So when they do that, if we open up down and we can't rally, then we'll know maybe you know, it's going to have it's going to have some strength there or if they open up down and they reverse higher, it, it's priced in. So as far as the rating agencies, they do have some power. It just depends on when and where they do it in, in, in the path of this market. And of course, China eased over the weekend, as we said in the intro. How is, are the industrials looking? They look good. They've been trading pretty much parallel to the spider. So if you look here at the XLI, you will see there's been selective action in there. It's near the highs, acting very, very well. It's near a breakout. So this one also held above the 20 day moving average. If it starts getting above this area, you're going to see new highs here. So if you want to trade it and see your support, you have about what is this 3650 on support. It starts getting above this area, which the highs here is about 3742. That would propel another round of short covering there in the industrials. And with oil rising at the end of last week, what's the psychology of the market regarding oil? I think right now we're about 105. And at this particular point, it's okay for stocks. I think you'll see headlines about it, but I think it won't really be a headwind until it starts getting above like 110, 112. And a lot of people are asking me what to do with the OAHs with higher oil. I think the OAHs look good. 
OHs, they've given us three different buys. You know, this was the buy in the hole as, you know, the right shoulder was building of that uh, head and shoulders pattern. This was your ad right here when it went above this descending channel. And now it's right in front of big resistance. It'll be very important to see what happens around here. I'm long sum and I want to see if I see it get above 4380 with some volume, this will also continue higher. So a lot of these ETFs are at very important spots. So you need to watch the composure, see if they continue to stay in the same trend and see if volume, which you talk very highly about, can break them higher. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to be talking about high beta tech stocks next, so stay with us. Hi, I'm Sean Hendelman, CEO of T3 Live, where we train, coach, and mentor traders in order to help you put your money to work with confidence. The T3 Live approach is a blueprint for you to recognize, adapt, and ultimately take advantage of different market conditions. To begin your training with T3 Live, we would like to offer you the opportunity to enroll in our free 30-day online home study course. Fill in your name and email address, and I'll see you on the other side. All right, we're back, and we're going to talk high beta tech stocks. Stock, Scott, we did just touch on Apple and sort of your game plan here, but let's talk macro versus active traders and what their game plan should be. Well, I think if you're a macro investor, you need to stay the course. I think this is one of those few stocks that will be able to blow off that, that outside reversal on Wednesday. As, a, as an active trader, I think you could trade different ends of the ranges right now until it consolidates and gives you a new pattern. If you look here at the chart of Apple, you will see what I'm talking about. You know, you had a, a huge move. This is one for the active investor. Here's your earnings. Went sideways. We were talking about getting involved. I know for me as an active trader, I bought right around this 449. Here is where you added for momentum. And then this was your parabolic move. Really big move. Outside day when it traded below this 510. And then you did it again. So, you know, right now the, the bears and the bulls are fighting. I think the bulls are ultimately going to win. I think you could trade it long versus the low from Thursday, which is around 486. And shorts were probably traded short versus the high here. And it could be a mini battle here. Investors, I would say be in tier one for now. And then if we get in motion again, you get your trading hat back on and we continue. But for right now, I think there'll be small trades and it needs some time. All right, let's check back in on Amazon.com. Lots, <laughs> lots of news on the stock and the company last week. Of course, it was downgraded by Morgan Stanley um, to equal weight from overweight. But we've got big news for them in the works. Three new towers going up in Seattle. Sounds exciting. How is the chart shaping up? I don't like the way the chart looks, to be honest. I think it's showing some relative weakness. Amazon's now missed for two quarters, so the street's giving them a pass, but you know, it's slowly but surely getting a little bit weaker. If you look here at the chart of Amazon, you'll see that you know, as far as from a macro standpoint, it's, it's in the lower end of its range, which is right down here. Let me get rid of this toolbar for you. Mm -hmm. um, right down here. So it's below the moving averages where all the other stocks are above it. So I think if, you ha if you're a really big Amazon fan, you could be long it, but if it starts to break below, the, the 178 to 170 area, you're going to see on a, on a monthly time frame that that could you know, definitely be a floor that breaks and could get you 126. So I'm not loving the way Amazon is looking technically right now, longer term. Okay, and your stock of 2012, Google. Are you long at the levels that you see today? I'm not long right now. Google has had a slow start because they missed earnings, but it's been methodical. Google missed earnings, it went down and held the 200 day. I might as well just put the chart up and show you what transpired here. Okay, we'll go back to the, the daily here. You'll see that you know, it came out with earnings. You know, first of all, if you remember the reason why, we had a nice breakout area right around this 630. From 630 to 660 was a nice cash flow trade. Here was your earnings. As a momentum trader, we do not take them into earnings. We took options, and I lost all the money in those options. Mm -hmm. So if you're a longer term investor, though, and you know how to invest with a plan, you could have bought versus this previous support at the 200 day. And if you did so, you're doing just fine. So right now, we're in the middle end of this range. We're holding above 600. I think the longer we stay above 600, the better. I would probably re enter Google as a momentum trader once it starts to clear this 615 area. But until then, I'm going to let it go sideways. Okay, so perfect segue from Google to the Google of China. Let's talk Baidu. We reported earnings last week down 4.85% on Friday. Where do you see support levels for Baidu? Yeah, Baidu, I think, is going to be a little bit in the penalty box. Um, their, their quarter was okay. It wasn't enough to get everyone excited. I think it's going to have to you know, show us what direction it's going to go. If you want to look at support for Baidu, you look at the chart here. Um, you know, it did break above uh, this little trend line right here, okay, which was right around the 133. 
you know, if you see here, it's trying to hold the 10-day, but I don't know if it's going to hold. I think some traders might actually try and short this. If it goes below 134, you could see a cute short, and then I think for more of a macro stance on it, this thing better hold 130.50. Otherwise, it'll, it'll get out of play for a little while and lose some momentum. Okay, what about Netflix? Because I know you covered your shorts on Netflix <laughs> last week. Are you still long here? Um, I covered my shorts, I didn't flip yet. Netflix has been such an unbelievable trading vehicle for traders. We talked about the lower pattern pivot for a high volume. You talk about volume, this was big volume. On Netflix, this is when volume came in and ignited the stock that was right down here. This is when we got very, very excited. This is when I actually was on Bloomberg right around here saying when you know Netflix was 80 bucks, it can go to 120. It actually went above 130. So now it's a little, you know, I would say at this point, it's getting really, really tight. So you have to watch it closely. Right now I am flat and I will be see looking to see if there is some type of trade here. If it can start getting above just say 125 with heavy volume, then I think it can continue. But if it starts to break back below the support that it's been putting in place around 118, it could try and fill this gap. So right now I think Netflix has to prove to me which way it's going to go. So I will keep it on the radar. Okay, and really quickly, just some quick hits here. Let's talk IBM hovering at 52 week highs. How's it holding up? Right now I'm in tier one. If it can get above 194.50, I think IBM could be in motion for above 200 at some point soon. Okay, and your bottom line, Intel, how are you playing it? Intel, I was long tier one on Thursday. I added on Friday into that breakout. And now I'm back to tier one and I'm gonna try and see if I could hold it as long as it continues to act well. Qualcomm has been on your radar for a while now, but above 62, how high can it go? Let's take a look at that chart. I haven't had it up right. in a while. You know it's been somewhat lethargic. Um, but it finally triggered a little bit for us, okay? If you look here, I was long Qualcomm in this area. I've been holding it for a while. Same type of uh, strategy as Apple. It had earnings, couldn't fill this earnings gap, went sideways. This was the day that I got in tier one. Here is the day I got into tier two. And now I think on Friday I sold a little bit into the strength and I'm gonna continue to hold a little bit. I think your add-on already took place, but if you're in it on a macro stance, I think you could hold it. We did see some bearish action on LVS last week, closing down 0.88% on Friday. What's next for LVS? Well, I think that there was a lot of news out on wind today. I want to see how wind reacts to that whole shareholder situation. But as far as LVS, um, it still looks good. LVS has been holding higher. You know, you did get a mini reversal at the highs here. So that's always a short term sell signal. If you look at the chart here, this is when it broke out. This is when you could have added right here. And, and now it's, you know, if I want to try and draw some kind of trend here, or whatnot, it's hard to do off the bat. But I would say as long as, you know, as long as LVS holds above just say 50, 40, 50, 50, I think it's fine. Perhaps after this bar, you know, you can get a little bit of a pull in and then we'll see what happens from there. Okay, and just touching one last time on your barometer for the financials, Goldman Sachs, is it getting ready to break out? I sure hope so. That'd be that'd be you know <laughs> sexy for the for the banks and for the market. You know, first time it failed at 11750. If you look here, I'll show you why it failed there. You know, look at the size of the resistance here. This was the high back in August. Here is your October high. So, you know, if you recall, remember when I was here with Alex, who we will miss as she goes to Bloomberg. This is when we got long and said Goldman Sachs was acting better. Here's your move to resistance, consolidating, holding the 20 day. The longer it goes sideways, the longer it continues to base here. I think the, high, the higher the probability that you grab this for a trade above 117.50 for a move back to 125 and maybe even 130 at some point this year. All right, so Scott, what's the one thing you're looking at today? I'm going to see how we handle this open. I want to wait the first 30 to 60 minutes. I have about six, you know, I have six swing trades on. I want to see how they hold. I have one hedge. If all of a sudden we, they start selling the news, I want to see if 1353 to 1355 holds. If that doesn't, which was the previous high, I'm going to watch that 10 day moving average. As long as we stay above the 10 day moving average, I think you have to trade from a net long position. If we close below that with any type of volume or any type of, you know, ferocity, I think then the trade changes and then we'll shift gears once again. All right, good stuff. Thanks so much for having me, Scott. I had I'm, fun. I'm glad you're here and uh, <laughs> look forward to doing more with you moving forward. Me too. All right, happy trading, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you.